Even though everyone is expecting the Bank of Canada to lower interest rates, fixed rates are on the rise, and this is largely due to inflation data out of the U.S. that is causing bond yields to go up, which means if you are in the market for a mortgage in the next four to six months, there's some things you need to do in order to protect yourself. But before we get into it, my name is Nolan Mathias, and if you want the latest Canadian real estate and mortgage news, this is the place for you, so do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and hit the like button so more people like you can see this video. Oh, and by the way, if you are looking down and you see that you aren't already subscribed, that's because this is a new channel dedicated to Canadian real estate and finance news. So go ahead, click the subscribe button, and hey, go check out the other channel as well. It's a little bit bigger a little bit more followers, and it has the latest global financial and economic news. Oh, and one last thing, if you are looking at getting a mortgage in the next three to six months, or even if you're a year or two out, go to mortgagesecrets.ca where you can get a free copy of my book, Mortgage Secrets, that gives you everything you need to know about negotiating and choosing a mortgage. Yes, it'll tell you exactly how to beat your bank, beat your broker, and get the lowest rate possible. Well, understanding what you actually get for that lowest rate. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's discuss mortgage rates, bond yields, and everything that is going on. And I can't emphasize enough that it is important if you know that a mortgage is coming up for renewal or you know that you will be jumping into the market, that the best time to start looking at the options for yourself is well in advance of when you think you will need them because interest rates can fluctuate quite substantially over a three to four month period of time meaning that if you wait until the last 30 days to renew your mortgage or until you actually go out to buy a property to actually get a rate hold, well, it could end up costing you tens of thousands of dollars more than if you had been paying attention to it earlier. And the last three months are no better example of this as interest rates have come up and gone back down to the tune of about a half a percent. So if you had a mortgage that was coming up for renewal and you acted four months ago, you could have gotten a substantially better rate than if you were acting right now. So you really need to be thinking about this and you need to be engaging a mortgage broker for two reasons. One is to make sure that you are getting the right mortgage and the mortgage that you are getting is the one that still is most suitable to you. And the second is to actually get those rate holds in place so you are protected. And I guess as a bonus, third reason why you should be talking to a mortgage broker is because the mortgage broker lenders, the MCAPs, the First Nationals, the CMLSs of the world, which don't have the big brand names to skate on, actually have to have better products. And when you talk to a mortgage broker, what you will find is that more often than not, they will have significantly lower payout penalties, which is going to be important if interest rates at some point in the next three to five years do actually turn around and come down quite substantially. And when it comes to big banks, they will always tell you that these are B lenders, but I'm gonna tell you right now that B stands for banks because the products that the banks offer from a mortgage perspective at least are inferior to what many of the other lenders offer. And the reason why is quite simply, the other lenders, those competitors, those lenders that specialize in mortgages and just mortgages actually have to have better products in order to be able to compete. And this is the best kept secret in banking, the fact that these lenders exist and actually have better products. Of course, the banks aren't going to tell you that, the mainstream media doesn't seem to want to tell you that, and that's why I'm here, because I'm on a mission to extinguish crappy mortgages, and this is my service to you. It's not because I'm a broker, it's because it's the truth. So before I get into the actual interest rates for this month, I wanna show you what's happening with bond yields because this is how five-year fixed mortgages are priced. In fact, this is how most fixed mortgages are priced. And what bond yields are doing can usually give you a one to two day heads up on where fixed interest rates will go. So I'm gonna show you how to read some of these charts and I'm gonna show you exactly what's wrong in the Canadian mortgage market right now. So if we take a look here, this is a chart of the Canada five-year government bond yield. And as you can see, this is over the last five days, last Wednesday, last five business days, last Wednesday, rates were down around the 3.59 range, so 3.6%. And as of Monday of this week, they got as high as 3.82%. Now they come back down a little bit, but this is a pretty big jump. This is a 0.17% jump in the interest rates, which means we could see up to a 0.2% increase in fixed mortgage rates sometime this week. In fact, some lenders have already increased their interest rates. Now some haven't, which means there's still opportunity to lock in for at least four months at the lower rates, but this is an indication that interest rates are probably going to be going up. 
And to help you understand this a little bit further, I want to show you what this looks like over a longer time horizon, because this is the last three months for interest rates. And if you had a mortgage that was just coming up for renewal in the next month, let's say by the end of April, or you were looking to purchase a property sometime around the end of April or early May, if you had been proactive and you had locked in rates around the end of January, you could have gotten a rate that was almost half a percent lower than what it is today. And as you can see, even though the expectations around the Bank of Canada were interest rates are remaining flat right now and then they're going to go down, well, when it comes to the bond market, we've seen major spikes and major drops, which is why you need to act proactively when it comes to getting a mortgage, because these spikes and drops that happen independent of the Bank of Canada, which is the big piece of interest rate news that we see all of the time, well, they play an important role in how much you're going to pay if you choose a fixed rate mortgage. And not only that, they play an important role in which type of mortgage might be the best for you at any given time, because pretty much all mortgages are priced off their equivalent length bond yields. So a five-year mortgage is priced off a five-year bond yield, a four-year mortgage off a four-year bond yield, a two-year off a two-year bond yield. And I want to show you what's happening right now, because this is really interesting. If we add in, for example, the two-year bond yield to our chart, you can see that the two-year bond yield is actually quite a bit higher than what the five-year bond yield is. This is because there's an expectation that interest rates five years down the road are going to be lower than what they will be two years down the road. And that's more or less oversimplifying it, but that's essentially the gist of it. And it isn't supposed to look like this. The two-year bond yield and the two-year mortgage rate should be lower than what the five-year rates are. And if we add in the three-year and the four-year you can see the same sort of thing. These rates are higher than what the five-year yields are, which is not normal. It's actually an indication that there's probably going to be a recession. It's what's called an inverted yield curve. And typically that happens when it is widely expected that interest rates are going to have to drop because the economy is about to face some hard times. And then where it gets even more interesting is when you look at the 10-year rates, well, those 10-year rates for quite a long period of time have actually been below the five-year rates, which is also abnormal. And to just put this in perspective, I want to show you what this looks like over a five-year time horizon and what it should look like in a normal market. So if you go back to, let's call it April of 2021, you can see that all of the rates were where they should have been. A two-year was cheaper than a three-year, a three-year was cheaper than a four-year, a four-year was cheaper than a five-year. And a five-year was cheaper than a 10-year. And if we go out even further than that, you can see that this is pretty much, at least when we aren't heading into a recession, where interest rates lie most of the time. And what this tells us, at least right now, is that fixed rate mortgages are going to be significantly cheaper than short-term or variable rate mortgages. And all of this plays an important role when choosing a mortgage, because at least as far as I'm concerned, the data, the information, the studies have shown us that the best mortgage to get at any given time is the one that is going to be the least expensive when you get it. So if variable rates are cheaper, you take a variable rate. And if fixed rates are cheaper, you take a fixed rate. And if there is a discrepancy between fixed rates, so if two-year fixed rates are higher than five-year fixed rates, you take the five-year fixed rate in order to guarantee and lock in the interest rate for longer. Assuming, of course, that you are getting a mortgage at a lender that has low payout penalties. So in other words, is not a B lender, it's not a bank. And all the rates I'm gonna show you today are non-B lender rates. These are prime A++ lenders. They cherry pick the best of the best for clients. And this is about what interest rates are going to be in the next couple of days, assuming that all the lenders actually increase their interest rates. Now, there is a chance that lenders aren't going to increase their interest rates because they're going to get more competitive in the spring market and they're going to reduce their margins. But it's something to pay attention to nonetheless. And if you take a look at the five-year fixed full feature rates right now, what you can see is that all of these across the board have gone up since the last time we did a mortgage rate update, which was about the beginning to the middle of March. So in the beginning to the middle of March, interest rates were coming down. Now the fixed rates have actually turned and gone the opposite direction. So starting with insured mortgage rates, you can see that these have gone up quite substantially from the last time we did an update. Current rates for a five-year fixed insured mortgage are about 5.19%. And these are going to be the lowest price mortgages that you will find because they carry the least risk for the bank. They are backed by insurance. The bank doesn't have to worry about losses on these types of mortgages. So they're obviously the cheapest. 
And then when you take a look at it from a risk perspective, when you put greater than 35% down, you're pretty similar risk to an insured mortgage, primarily because most people aren't going to walk away from a property where they put a 35% down payment. And there's also a low likelihood that property prices are going to correct to the point where properties are down 35% and people end up in a negative equity situation, which might cause them to walk away. So if you put greater than 35% down, you get pretty similar rates to insured mortgages. Then as you start to put less money down, the interest rates go up. So with 30% down, you're looking at 5.29%. With 25% down, you're looking at 5.34%. And with 20% down, you're looking at 5.44%. Now, it used to be that if you put 20% down, you'd get a better interest rate. It's no longer the case. The reason why is because at some point, the banks figured out that the 20% down mortgages are the ones without insurance, and therefore, they're the ones that carry the most risk for the bank. And now they price them accordingly. And then if you're looking at an uninsurable mortgage, so this is if you are purchasing a property over a million dollars, you're refinancing, or you're getting a mortgage with 30-year amortization, at least if you ignore the new rules that are coming out in the budget that was released about the same time as this video, well, then you're looking at about 5.69% for the interest rate. Now, for variable rates, these haven't changed since last month. They will change when the Bank of Canada reduces rates. The thing that will change most likely is going to be the prime rate. It'll likely come down to 6.95%. But as of right now, you're looking at prime minus 0.9% for an insured mortgage and greater than 35% down. At 30% down, you're looking at prime minus 0.75%. At 25% down, you're looking at prime minus 0.6%. And the rates kind of continue from there. Now, I'm going to pop up the discount mortgage rates on the screen here. You can pause and take a look at these if you'd like. I'm not going to go through them in detail. The reason why is because most of the time when people understand the difference between a discount mortgage rate and a full feature rate, they tend to choose the full feature rate and pay the slightly higher rate to get the more features, the lower penalties, and the ability to pay out the mortgage and get a new one at a lower interest rate at some point in the future. Discount rates will often prevent you from being able to do that. And the one big mistake that we see people make is taking a mortgage broker or a bank's word for the fact that they don't have to worry about any of this stuff and then finding out three to four years later that they actually did have to worry about it because they signed a very long legal document that actually said that they couldn't do some of the things that the banker or the broker told them that they could do. So most people won't choose these. I do believe in full transparency. So if you are looking at a mortgage and you see these rates out there, understand that just like anything else in life, you get what you pay for and mortgages are no different. Oh, and by the way, if you want to know more about these types of mortgages, you can check out my Rate Secrets course, which is on sale right now, or get the Mortgage Secrets book. And I go in depth about what the differences are between discount and non-discount mortgages. And then I'll just pop up the variable rate discount mortgages. I don't think these are really in play for many people right now for two reasons. One is because if you get this type of mortgage, you need to have the ability to lock in. And some of the lenders that offer these types of mortgages will pretty much have you over a barrel because you won't be able to switch to a different lender, which means your lock-in rates are going to be insane, but also because these rates are significantly higher than what five-year fixes are. So why wouldn't you take the lower rate and lock in the discount? So those are the interest rates for April of 2024. Obviously, there's a lot to pay attention to here, but the number one thing here is if you know that you're going to be in the market for a mortgage, make sure that you are preparing sooner rather than later. It can save you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. Make sure you're dealing with a mortgage broker that you can trust. And if you need a mortgage broker you can trust, reach out to Mortgage360 and we'd be happy to help you. Not only do you know me from YouTube, but we've also got the same certifications that companies like Ben & Jerry's and Patagonia have. It's called B Corp certification, which means the things that we do with respect to taking care of our customers, our employees, and the community as a whole are verified by a third party. We do what we say we're going to do. And hopefully you take that as a sign that we can be trusted to be the ones to actually do the shopping for a mortgage for you. Oh, and if you wanna see more on that 30 year amortization thing and the complete catastrophe that it's going to be, make sure you check out this video right here.